And you are looking live at Sports Gamers Online Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. It's week one of season 22 for the SFL, and we are delighted to have you with us as the Queen City Corsairs visit the Baltimore Vultures. Good evening, folks. I'm Cameron Duty, and joining me in the booth today is my good friend Anthony Ellison. Justin Reside and Axel Raven are taking care of stats this evening. Cameron Irvine in the production truck. Anthony, welcome to Season 22, and welcome to all of you watching tonight. Happy opening day. Anthony, what is it about this game that catches your eye? It, it, it's, the, it's the running game here. When you have three people on your team that have rushed for over a thousand yards last season and you have a, a, a Hall of Famer and gains on your team, it's going to be decided how they're going to come out this season. Are they going to come out running the football like they did last year and how the defense is going to stop it? But the fact is, it's the first game of the season and it's a lot of hype going on. A lot of hype indeed, a lot of pageantry, a lot of excitement, putting on the helmets for the first time this season. And we are just glad that you are with us, folks. SFL action right here on YouTube. As you can see, Baltimore, the home team, going to get the ball first to start today's game. And right off the bat, that Queen City defense is going to be tested. We're ready for some football. Sit back, relax, get a cold beverage and a snack. You are not going to want to change the channel for the next hour and a half kickoff is underway and we are glad to have you with us. And this one will be returned. And Baltimore will start at the 31-yard line. That will bring their long-term quarterback out under center, Jack Wigmore. We know all about him last season. He threw for 2,897 yards, a 61% completion rating, 20 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, a QBR of 100.7, so another good year in the office. And he will start under center, first and 10. And we, we'll talk soon about that back field that he has to work with. Wigmore to throw. The pass is complete. A nice seven yard pickup to begin this season here of the SFL on offense for these guys. The Baltimore Vultures, that one is reeled in by Ivory Irvin. Quickly back to the line, second and three. The handoff up the middle to the running back. That's the fullback Hall of Famer, T. Roy Gaines, who gets the first down, Anthony. Yeah, and I like the tempo right here. They went back up to the line. So what that does for the defense is they got to stay in their personnel. Baltimore saw a opening right there, and they ran the ball. I love the balance. Balance is going to be very important on offense going forward for Baltimore. Wigmore sending a man in motion. That's the tight end, Cesar Ackerman from left to right. One man in the backfield. They go back to the air. This one, a little off the mark right there. That one was indeed intended for Ackerman. Let's look at the starting lineup real quick for Baltimore. Quarterback Jack Wigmore, halfbacks Warren Murray and Hubba Kimbrell. Fullback T-Roy Gaines, the wide receiver core. Ivory Irvin, David Anderson, Daly Holder, and Mac Chima. The two tight ends, Cesar Ackerman and Jackson Roberts. The two tackles, Sir Charles and Ray Arnold. Rookie Olivia Bleeker as well on tackle. Guards, Alden Bleeker and Jay Arnold. And the center, Don Jones. Johnson. The handoff now. This, I believe, is the first carrier for Warren Murray this season, and he gets five. That brings up third down. So what we've seen so far, two passes, two runs, that's a good balanced offense that you're going to want to have because then, now Queen City, you don't know what they're going to come out with. This is a manageable third down right here, but definitely look for them to go in the air. And again, sending man in motion, using a lot of motion in today's game. And that's Jackson Roberts, the tight end. Third and five. Pressure coming around the outside. Wigmore delivers, and it is incomplete. A nice deflection there by the Queen City defense. Queen City, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to stop them on third down. That's big right there. It's going to force Baltimore to hand the ball over to you. What? Got to be careful, Baltimore, throwing over the middle. That was a double coverage right there. A nice job by the uh, linebacker there, Luke Swift, on that deflection. Now, fourth and five, the first punting attempt this year by Maddie Coffins. And 
this one is going to take a bounce and roll into the end zone. So it's going to get a little advantage there for Queen City as they will bring it out to the 20. Coffins is very good at pinning the opponents deep. This time they will start from their 20-yard line, first and 10, and we'll take a look at the Queen City Corsairs for the first time this season, led by quarterback Eric Price. One man in the backfield, two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. They throw that pass is complete to Adrian Ellis. And we'll take a look quickly at that offensive lineup. We mentioned Eric Price at quarterback, the two halfbacks, William McDowell and Jet Zero, the fullback, Pony Zama, the wide receivers, Adrian Ellis, Xavier Knight, and Joseph Baudet. Bob Wood as well at wide receiver. The two tight ends, Arnold Paca and James Matthew Jr. You also see Abad Ruiz the second in there as well at tight end. And the guard, Robert Cron. That is your offensive lineup for the Queen City Corsairs. They hand the ball off and absolutely swarmed in the backfield is the halfback right there. Jet Zero, that is, and he is met immediately by a hungry Baltimore defense. And what we saw right there was a perfect time blitz. That's called great studying in the offseason, knowing that they like to throw that pitch to the outside. So what Baltimore did, they sent more to that side than the offense can go to, and that's the way to blow it up in the backfield. Fantastic defensive play call. Second and 15 now. They go back to the air. Price is going to step up and run for what he can get. He gets about six. That's going to bring up a big-time third down, Anthony. And that, and that was good right there because that was almost going to be a minus six-yard sack because you had the end coming off the edge. But what a way to step up at the pocket and climb up to the pocket and found an opening to get some positive yardage. Queen City faced with their first third down of the game. They go to the air. The pass is complete. A great strike across the middle, right out to midfield, and that's James Matthew Jr., the 6'7", 265-man, 10 years in the league and all 10 here with Queen City. And, and that's just a, a veteran play right there by a veteran, James Matthew, seeing the cover two defense. And what you want to do is you want to get right behind that linebacker right there, sit in front of the safety. Good job by Eric Price moving in the pocket, creating that time for Matthew to get that catch. And Queen City will continue their drive. They hand it off once more. Nice room to navigate there for the halfback. That's William McDowell. He picks up five. So Baltimore definitely want to look at sending more people than they can block because that's going to change the timing of the routes. It's going to rush the passes right there. I'm Queen City. I'm definitely running the ball more, trying to slow Baltimore down. And on second and five, they run it once more, this time right up the middle. And I believe that they're going to give forward progress to the halfback, Jet Zero, and that's going to bring up first down. Let's quickly take a look at this Baltimore defense. The defensive ends, Robert Brady and Al Walker. Defensive tackles, Ralph Leopold and Nate Brown and Saron Yates the fourth. Inside linebacker, Frank Smith, and we will continue after this play going over this defensive lineup here for Baltimore. The throw to the end zone, or close to the, uh, the end zone, excuse me. That one is deflected, and Giovanni Bolt, you'll hear his name in just a moment. We'll continue with this defensive lineup here. Uh, outside linebackers, Keenan Samuels and Alvin Mack. Cornerbacks, Ben Stackenpaper, Enzo Bolt, and Marvin Himes, and Elijah Warfield. Free safety, Sullivan Tyson. We just mentioned Giovanni Bolt, and strong safety, Troy Loshaw. Second and 10 now for Queen City. They are knocking on the door. A nice little run out to the right side there, and it's going to be stopped immediately by Smith coming up on the defensive play. Anthony, what did you see there? So right there is, is filling the gap right there. So that linebacker made an amazing play to get to there and stop him for the yardage. It's setting up a long third down situation where Baltimore North, they got to pass the ball. And to the air they go. Price unloads to the end zone, and it is complete. Touchdown, Queen City. They strike first with a fantastic reception by Adrian Ellis. So it's one thing to know that they're going to pass the ball. The second thing is that you have to defend it. So they got a little greedy, 36 playing. They saw that this was a post route to jump it. 
it was just out of the hands right there. What a way to say the concentration right there for the catch and the touchdown, and we got the first points on the board. Now, uh, Troy Loshaw, as you said, was going for the pick, and instead it is a completion for Queen City to the house for six now for the extra point. It is good by Joe Garfield and Queen City, the first to strike, folks. How about that? A nine-play, 79-yard drive ending with the big touchdown pass. Now will Baltimore be able to respond? We've got 521 left in the first. We cannot wait to see what happens here. And Baltimore just has to remember this is the start of the season. You know you got nerves in that first game. It's been a while since you played. So that all you got to do is you got to rile the, the team up, recognize that you can go out there and do the same exact thing. This is David Anderson on the return. Running right. He's still got some momentum there. Stiff arms a man and gets down to the Baltimore 40 one yard line and again as you said they want to set up here uh, with a great response we know Baltimore always good at coming back they they don't uh, they don't falter they don't waver uh, so being down seven early in this game they won't be rattled that's for sure Anthony yeah and it's the first drive was looking good you had a balance there you came out throwing the ball knowing that the, that Queen City realized that you got a lot of good rushers on your team so just having balance and just sticking with your game plan. First and 10 from the 41 yard line. Pressure coming, and the pass is complete past midfield. And that will bring up another first down here. As you said, Anthony, they do a really good job of moving the football. We all know that, and they've started early in this game doing the same. So, what, what makes this throw just fantastic? This is a timing route you have to throw the ball right when that receiver broke and that's what they did right there got the ball before that defender was able to turn around and to knock it down right there fantastic throw and now you can run the ball on first down because you are gaining yardage and a nice reception for Ivory Irvin as well First and 10 once more. Here is another pass just a little bit low, and that's going to be incomplete uh, intended for Mac Chima. Let's take a look at Queen City's defense. The defensive ends, Deterian Darshington and Chad Stinson. Defensive tackle, Emmanuel Petrila. The inside linebackers, Casper Haddock and Kappa Jones. Outside linebackers, Luke Swift, Morgan Brown, and Wolf Highland. The cornerbacks, Brandon Ewing, Justin Reside coming over from Las Vegas, and Ted Haynes. Anthony Wyo, a cornerback as well. Well, the free safety, Alex Marshall, and the strong safety, G.B. Wallace. The pass is complete this time across the middle for Baltimore with a nice reception that time and another first down. And, and right there, they saw the opening, realized that the tight end had a defensive lineman, it looks like, in coverage right there, and that was just an easy pitch and catch right there for another first down. Cesar Ackerman with the reception a fresh set of downs just outside the 30 yard line and Baltimore moving the ball man in motion Wigmore to throw again complete this time to Ivory Irvin he is someone that you can tell Wigmore is wanting to get active early in this game yeah and they're seeing that there's a hole in Queen City's defense and their zone coverage right here. So all they're doing, they're just finding the opening. Once again, that's a nice little skinny post. The, the thing that's so key about that is when you are in front of the defender so you can shield it off so only you can catch the ball, that's just great route running and great anticipation by the quarterback. 350 remaining in this first quarter of this opening day of action here for Queen City and Baltimore. Wigmore again to pass to the end zone. The pass is complete. You could tell Ivory Urban was trying to stick his arm out there to get across the goal line. He's going to be just short of that. Nevertheless, first down and goal for Baltimore. So you could tell that they had a lot of chemistry in the offseason with the practice right there because these are the same routes and they're in double coverage and triple coverage. But the fact is, when you have confidence like Wigmore has with Irvin, this is the stuff that's going to happen right here. Another Five, chain yeah. moving catch. Absolutely, Anthony. Five targets already for Ivory Irvin, and four receptions and 51 yards to start the day. First and goal. The throw, and it is completely stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Actually, may lose a couple of yards there. Second and goal. 
So the one thing about the, the red zone, obviously the plays become shorter, your route becomes shorter because you don't have that many yardage. So it's very important to punch this in, but you have three amazing running backs. Got to use them during this point in the red zone. And with the ground game into the end zone, touchdown Baltimore. Hubba Kimbrell, his first TD of the season. Yeah, and leading rusher from last season, doing what he left off last week, last season. Beautiful run, great job by the interior line. Just putting nose to nose on the ball, blocking, be able to kick it out, find a little hole to get right in there for a touchdown. You mentioned his rushing yards last season, 1,860 yards and 17 touchdowns. A nice season indeed. And that is going to bring out Shark Tarkington now for the extra point. Here is the snap, the hold, the kick is up, and it is good. We have a tie ball game, 250 left in this first quarter. Queen City and Baltimore all knotted up. You are watching SFL action on YouTube. And we want to welcome you again. If you're new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sidelines and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and begin your career or just meet the stars of the SFL on and off the field. That return out to the 26-yard line for Queen City, and that's where they will set up shop. So now Queen City is ready to respond. Baltimore's defense Really excited. The, the fact that the offense came out there and got the touchdown. Now, it's, this is a perfect chess matchup. Let's see what Baltimore are doing. They did well when they sent pressure. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. A delayed handoff, and it's going to go for about two yards. I believe they're going to credit him with two yards on the carry, second down. And that's going to be something to watch for when Queen City comes out in three to four wide sets. It's a lighter box that you can run on Baltimore because they got to put more defensive backs out there. So that might be a good thing to do. Second and eight now. Price scrambling. He throws complete. This guy is on the target today. Matthews Jr. once again getting the reception first and ten. And that play took some time to develop. And the fact is that Price was able to move around in the pocket enough for Matthews to be open for that play. Great job keeping your eyes down the field so you can throw that perfect strike for another first down. So far, Eric Price, 4 of 5 for 86 yards, doing a nice job through the air. And they'll go to the air once more. That pass, a little off target there. That route maybe not completely developed intended for the wide receiver Bob Wood and that will bring up second and ten. So if I'm Baltimore to avoid those great dimes down the field you got to send more pressure. The offensive line for Queen City is doing a fantastic job blocking the four up front of Baltimore. Again going with the two receivers set to the right and one to the left. One man in the backfield and Price he scrambles he throws it is complete to the end zone, touchdown, Queen City again through the air and again to James Matthew Jr. for yet another strike. And we saw this, the series before, it looks like Baltimore got a little happy. It looks like that was stacking paper that was on the defense right there, read the route beautifully, just didn't come up with that catch. But I do want to give credit to the offensive line for Queen City once again giving Price time to get in the pocket, survey the field, and find his favorite target so far in Matthews Jr. An impressive two series to begin this 2023, or excuse me, 2024 season 22. Still writing 23 on my calendar. 14-7. <laughs> to The extra point is good by Queen City. What a game we have so far today in Baltimore. And this is this is what we look forward to. It's the beginning of the season. First game. We have a lot of excitement for both teams. And this is we're seeing some great offenses right now. A deep kick that time into the back of the end zone will bring it out to the 20-yard line. So so let's talk about this. Let's talk about the matchup 
between Queen City and Baltimore. A little bit of history here to put it into context. These, these two teams have met a total of 12 times. Two victories for Queen City. Baltimore has won 10. Uh, the last time that Queen City won, uh, I believe we're going back to season 14, if my stats are correct there. So these guys are hungry. This is a divisional matchup. That pass is incomplete. Coming in, how, do, how are you feeling as a player right now, Anthony? You are on Queen City side. You're up by seven. You're pumped, obviously, but you've got to stay laser focused here because Baltimore can strike at any second. Well, as a division rivalry, it's going to hit differently. You know that you're going to take it more personal. You know you're going to see them a few times, and you know their tendency. So you really have to, like, study film and realize if you can pick up the smallest thing, that's what you want to do. Wigmore's pass over the middle. That is complete. It is a short gain for Mac Chima. They get about four on that pass. So what you want to do, like, this is a big third down right here. You don't want Baltimore to get a first down here because it's going to continue the momentum. You want to stop it because you want to get back on offense to try to score. Fake handoff, and Wigmore rolls out to the left. He's throwing deep, and that was right in the hands of his receiver before being knocked out with great defensive coverage by Queen City that time, Anthony. And, and and great job right there. That's exactly what you want because you want your defense to get off the field so your offense can go back up there, score again. Baltimore right now got to gotta settle down, play some defense. Queen City got a chance to take a bigger lead. D.B. Wallace, number 31, knocked that one out of the hands of the Baltimore receiver, and that will bring up another punt this time. And there's the return. He's got room to run. Crosses the 50, still on his feet, and a nice return by Bob Wood, and that's going to put Queen City in really good field position on the Baltimore 39. So you got your defense stepping up. You got your offense getting scored, and now you have your special teams, which is a unsung hero. Beautiful blocking. You saw the wall on the right side, was able to just run down the sideline, almost took it to the house, and you set up your offense in fantastic position to score again. Ball on the 39-yard line, just as we mentioned, a minute and one second left in this first quarter. A high-energy first quarter, and Queen City now feeling the momentum on their side at the moment, and they want to capitalize. The handoff running left side and stopped after about a gain of two, a jet zero on the carry. So right now, if I'm I'm looking for uh, if I'm Queen City, I'm still become staying aggressive, realizing that you know Matthews is doing fantastic on the route running right here. You want to keep on attacking. You want to put the pressure on Baltimore. On second down, they go back to the air, and this one is picked off, intercepted by Baltimore. They needed the stop, and they got it that time. Giovanni Bolt with his interception, his first of the season. I absolutely love the energy on both sides right here. They, they've been so close the whole entire game. That should have been three interceptions already, but it's the first one. It's an important one. You're telling your offense, hey, we got your back. Just go out there, do your part, and we're going to do ours, and I love it. A play to note for sure. Baltimore maybe – even, you know, really dragging behind at that point as far as the momentum goes. And Queen City could have had them on the ropes early on in this game to really put them behind the eight ball. Instead, the defense comes up big. Baltimore now looking to respond. That pass complete. Guess who? Ivory Irvin out towards midfield. Another first down. Clock ticking as we finish out this first quarter. Look, there's going to be times where you're just going to say, hey, I believe my receiver is better than any defender up there and that's exactly what they're doing a rollout and throwing it to your other side of the field you realize that Irvin's going to catch it and that's exactly what he's doing fantastic start to the game we'll see if they try to get one final playoff before we get down to the end of this first quarter and they will Wigmore again to the air the pass off the hand of the intended receiver that was a Caesar Ackerman the intended target, and that will give us one play left in this first quarter, second and ten. Just 
Wigmore now under center, one man in the backfield. Two wide receivers, one to the left, one to the right. Pressure coming. Wigmore stands in there and delivers a laser beam to Mac Chima for the first down. And that's going to bring us to the end of a very exciting first quarter, Anthony. This is back and forth. This is the true definition of back and forth right here. Two teams that came out and saying, hey, we're going to play aggressive. We're going to give the fans exactly what they want. We're going to give the chat what we want to, and we're going to be setting up for an exciting game of football. Love it. Three quarters left to play, and it's going to be good. I can promise you that, folks. Don't go anywhere. You are watching the Simulation Football League on YouTube, and we are glad to have you with us. My name is Cameron Duty. I'm joined by Anthony Ellison. Again, thanks to Justin Reside and Axel Raven doing the stats. Cameron Irvine in the production booth. A great team right here to bring you this exciting matchup, and it has certainly been one thus far. With the run once more for Baltimore, they carry for about five yards. I believe they're going to give them five yards on the play. That'll make it a much more manageable second down. So th this is just basic, you know, football one on one. So when you pass the ball really well, the defeat defense has to defend it. What that means is the lighter box. That means there's going to be less linemen and linebackers there. So you can run the football because they're worried about the pass. Uh, formation, they give it again to the halfback. A first down and then some. Hubba Kimbrell crossing the line, moving the sticks, and a brand new set of downs for Baltimore. And then, and then right there, that's what the big guys do up front right there. I love the seal. When your left guard and your left tackle can just seal the edge right there, it just creates an opening, and the fullback can go right up there, kick out what they need. That's smash mouth football, and that's just lovely to watch. Everybody loves a good ground and pound attack, and Baltimore has one of the very best in the league. Back to the air this time. Pressure coming. The pass again crisp and precise to Ivory Irvin for another set of downs. And, and right there, you watch the replay, you see the picture-perfect pocket for a quarterback right there. Everybody picked up their assignment, and once again, there's that man, Ivan Irving, with another catch right there, and it's catching Queen City off balance with the great running attack with some key passes on this drive. It was Ivory Irvin there going one-on-one -on -one with Anthony Wyo, and that time Irvin gets the better of the battle. Baltimore really responding after that interception, and you can tell they feel the momentum shift, and they're going for it. Wigmore across the middle, touchdown. And that's Mac Chima, a little Mac and cheese to begin this SFL season 22. And Baltimore now rearing their head and are within a point of tying this ball game. Second catch of the day, the second catch of the game for Mac and Cheese and a first touchdown of the season. Absolutely beautiful execution to finish off the drive right there. And Baltimore just, it was, a, it was a whole new lease on life, if you want to put it that way. After they come up with the big interception, when they had their backs against the wall, and now Tarkington with the extra point, and it is good. Back to a tie ball game with 8.38 remaining in this second quarter. Are you liking the game so far? Do us a favor and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The SFL produces over 400 events a year. There is no one else that gives you more football. Don't miss a minute of SFL or SFLM action and help this channel grow through your support. Wood with a return out to the 26-yard line where Queen City will set up shop. Anthony, if you're Queen City, you just had the big interception. Baltimore capitalized to tie the ball game. What do you tell your quarterback right now as he gets back under center? Get the huddle, get everybody together, realize that it's a 0-0 ball game. Let's stick to our offensive game plan. We're passing the ball really well. We're sprinkling in some runs, but there's still a lot of play left. Just play by play, take it play by play. They keep it on the ground on first down and nothing there at all. A really nice job of Baltimore, Mac included, to make that stop. Really no pun intended, actually total pun intended. He hit him like a Mack truck, McDowell on the carry, and he was stopped for nothing. Yeah, that's the way. Shoot the gap, stop them in their tracks before they can get any yardage going. Second down, two receivers out to the right. 
One to the left. Now a man in motion. That's Adrian Ellis coming from right to left. And back to the air. Way overthrown that time. Just not able to connect with the wide receiver. And that brings up third down. This Baltimore defense now beginning to tighten up. Yeah, and, and they're, they're emphasizing the zone on Matthews over there. He had a couple catches earlier in, in, in uh, the game. So they're focusing their zone on Matthews. Got to start looking on the outside. There's going to be some single coverage for Queen City that's going to be available. Three receivers to the right in this formation for Queen City. And said they look to the left. The pass is almost contested right there. Uh, and that's going to be a quick... Quick series for Queen City as they go out on fourth down here. They'll have to punt this one away, so they'll be calling their punter in for this one. And you could tell by Baltimore last season, 16 interceptions in the regular season. They like to go after and get those turnovers. They almost happen again this drive. Ian Dagan back to receive the punt, and he gets a good one off, it looks like. Good hang time here. Tackled immediately at the 33-yard line. And now Baltimore has, has come from behind. They, as we talked about, were down early in this game. Now they have a chance to pull ahead. Now I'm going to flip the coin a little bit, Anthony. If you're this Queen City defense, what do you need to do? In my opinion, you've got to stop Ivory Irvin. That's that's number one, but you got to be careful. If you stop Ivory Irvin, they can run the ball. They have runners back there. So you don't want to make the box too small. Make sure you still have enough people to defend the run, but definitely keep an eye on Irving. A man in motion, and that man is Mac Chima. The handoff. And is hit pretty good that time. That's T. Roy Gaines, and... And we've got a guy, oh, we've got a player down, and it's Cesar Ackerman, the tied end for Baltimore. Yeah, let's, let's hope everything is okay. Yeah, you hate to see that. Limping gingerly off the, off the field, so hopefully that's nothing serious. Hopefully he can get back in this game. We've actually called his name a couple of times already, using him a lot in motion as well as an intended receiver. We'll get an update just as soon as we can. Second and six now for Baltimore. The handoff to Kimbrell. He runs left and doesn't get much. It's going to bring up a third and manageable, however, third and five to be exact. Yeah, and, and your Queen City, this is where you want to make a stop. You don't want them to keep on driving right here. You want to get the ball back. If I'm Baltimore, you know you got to look for number 10. Where is he at? Two in the backfield and a whole slew of receivers going deep. That pass is just off the mark. Nice coverage that time by Queen City. A really a showed a great maturation there by them. A nice stop. And that brings up fourth down. So now we're trading some punts back and forth between the two units. Um, and, and don't sleep on punting. That gives you field position. When you mm -hmm. can put them and you can pin them inside the 10, that makes it hard for the offense right here. So this is key. Matty Coffins again on to, to kick. And uh, we talk about just the great hang time he has, pushing them all the way back to the 25-yard line where Bob Wood is taken down so seven minutes remaining in a very exciting first half as we said already if you haven't yet please do hit that like button and subscribe as we said we enjoy the feedback and of course everyone who we can engage in content here to make this channel continue to grow and another good game taking place right here in Baltimore first and ten now for Queen City on the 25 yard line Eric Price back to throw that pass over the middle and just out of reach of the intended receiver. That one falls harmlessly to the ground. Yeah, that's a good good play right there. Great defense, no pass interference, was able to break it up. Matthew was, again, the intended target. Two to the left, one to the right. 
That pass over the middle, complete, and a nice little pitch and catch that time. And really a nice job of Bob Wood picking up that pass and running forward to get some very much-needed positive yardage. Yeah, I like that. It was like a nice little clear-out route. Just went underneath the coverage. It was able to get a, uh, some good yardage. A much more manageable third down now because of that. They send a man in motion. That is Abad Ruiz the second, the tight end. And the handoff that time to Jet Zero. And he jets his way up. And, oh, we've got another injury, folks, this time again for Baltimore. This time the free safety, Giovanni Bolt. We just seen him come up with the big interception, and now he's down. Man, you, you don't want to see it, especially with a six-time All-Star right there who makes big plays. Hopefully he can get back in the game quickly. So we've had Ackerman go out on the offensive side for Baltimore, and now Giovanni Bolt will try to get you updates as soon as they become available. First down now. The toss to Jet Zero. He lowers his shoulder and gets about four yards. I believe they're going to credit him with four. Second and six. Clock continuing to run. 6.20 remaining in this first half. One receiver to the left, two to the right, one man in the backfield, and Price goes to the air. Complete that time for Matthews. Once again, they are using him and utilizing him very effectively thus far. And the thing is, he's lining up in different areas right there. Right now, he, he was flanker out right there. Just a nice little drag route. The biggest thing was to get past that linebacker that was dropping in coverage and was able to find enough hole right there to get another catch. When you take a look at that, receiving yards for the day already crossing the 100-yard mark. And we've still got two quarters to play, two and a half, honestly, to be exact. Baltimore looked like they're showing coverage, uh, pressure, rather, and they back off. And here's that pressure we were talking about. The first sack of the day, down in the backfield goes Eric Price, thanks to a very, very aggressive Baltimore defense. Yeah, and that was just a nice little swim move. Just ripped inside, got inside of the, uh, the lineman's arms, was able to take the quarterback down. Ralph Leopold recording his first sack of the season. He is a second-year man all, all of his seasons, all two of his seasons, I should say, right here in Baltimore. Again, with the pass, and this time, oh, it looked like he may have had a reception going there, and instead it was knocked out of his hand. So third down of this Baltimore defense rising up. Great breakup by Elijah Warfield right there from the cornerback. He was able to step in and just threw his whole body in front to be able to knock the ball down. Third and 13 now. As we said, after that sack, it's went backwards a little bit for Queen Titty. This pass right on the money to McDowell. Across the middle, Eric Price delivers a beam. A nice job right there by the halfback to hold onto that one. McDowell and a first down. That was a tough catch right there. Just a seam route. Wanted to throw it right before the safety got there. And... McDowell was able to hold on to it. What a way to catch that. A, a, an incredible reception because he knew he was going to take an absolutely devastating hit right to the midsection, and indeed he did, but he was able to hold on to that football. Price again to the air. This pass complete once more, and folks, Eric Price is oh, down. Man. Eric Price is down, and he is slow to get up off the turf, folks. Injuries are plaguing this game within this last quarter, and this time it has struck Queen City. And instead now, we will have to watch Queen City rely on their backup quarterback to lead the drive. We'll see how long Eric Price will be out of this game. This, this definitely changes your, your what you're doing game plan-wise. And on second and three, we see them go with the handoff, churning forward that time, and gets a couple, brings up third and one. Wow, what an amazing turn of events that we have had in this game thus far. Yeah, really tough with key injuries that you just have to 
recognize the backup is in the same quarterback room as Price and was able to do the same game plan. So let's see how they execute it. This time the run gets just enough. Jet zero that time. And you can see they're beginning to rely heavily now on the rushing attack as they try to, to, to rally around each other to form a new game plan here. And it is first and 10 for Queen City. We have two receivers to the left, two to the right, and one in the backfield. Again, another run play, and that time not much there. And that is going to go for about a yard gain, Anthony. So, you know, a, a young quarterback's best friend is going to be your tight end in the running game. You have two good running backs, and you have a, you have a great tight end. You've got to utilize them. They go to the air, to the end zone, touchdown, Queen City. And just when you expect them to go soft, it's Ellis on the reception. An absolutely great play that time and a great job by the quarterback of delivering a fantastic strike. I said for a young quarterback, you got to have two good running backs, a good tight end, and a wide open broken coverage. And that's exactly what that was right there, a fantastic throw. Looks like Baltimore was watching in the backfield and didn't realize there was a receiver right behind him. Slip right past the defense. Great catch by Ellis. Take the lead. And a fantastic job by Rick Meyer there. And the kick is good. So Queen City, after their commander, Eric Price, goes down. A great job of stepping in by Meyer to throw really a, a nice dart, as we said, to the end zone. And Queen City back out front with three. 33 left in this first half, folks. I, I I just can't tell you the excitement here in the booth and what we're seeing in this game today. Certainly been an enjoyable one to watch, and we'll see if there will be a return out of the end zone. There will not be. Instead, they'll take this one at the 20. And, and if I'm Baltimore right now, you know that you can score. You realize that you've been doing a fantastic job running and throwing the ball, especially to, to Irving. Let's just keep it up. Keep going. Realize the clock. You still got enough time before the half. And now Baltimore. We'll see if they can respond. Nice job of the offense that time picking up the pressure and a good job of the Queen City defense there, making sure that ball falls harmlessly to the ground. Let's talk for a minute, Anthony, if, if you will. What does this do, Rick Meyer stepping in, throwing that touchdown pass, what does that do for a team? You know, you feel like you're down and and, and just you're in the, in the dumps after seeing Eric Price go out. How does that change the mentality for Queen City? Um, you got you got to rely on that that he can do the same exact thing that Price can do. Um, you take it as an advantage. Baltimore doesn't have any tape on the quarterback. So the fact is, they don't know the tendency to what the quarterback can do, and you can use that for your advantage. And this defense is working hard for Queen City right now. Another deflection that time for the Corsairs, and that brings up a third down and 10. Baltimore not able to move the football yet on this drive. Back to the air. The pass is complete to Ivory Irving. He fumbles the football. The ball is loose. Who's got it? It looks like it's going to be Baltimore that come up with it. They're going to be marked a yard short. Fourth and one here. Let's take a look at the replay. It looks like it wasn't fully secure after the first broken tackle, and the safety came in and just punched it free. Um, great job by the lineman, it looks like, that was able to recover it. Number 67, Jay Arnold. But it was still short of a first down, and Baltimore has to kick it. The defense knew they needed to step up and make a big play, and that they did. Coffins this time return to Wood. He'll make it out to the 31-yard line. We are nearing the two-minute warning, 2.51 left in this first half, this action-packed first half. And you have to imagine with Rick Meyer now under center, for Queen City that they are going to continue to get comfortable with him until we see Price come back in this game. We don't have an update yet. We'll let you know just as soon as we hear something. On first down now from the 31, two receivers again to the left and one to the right. The pass just off the mark, and that will fall to the ground, and it will bring up second and 10. Yeah, so right now, Queen City, you, do, you definitely want to – 
keep that balance going. I like that they're not afraid to throw the football, even with the backup in. You also can like spread the ball out, run it a little bit, but see if you can take a bigger lead. They go to the air, the pass complete again. They have worked that middle of the field really well all game long. And again, Matthew Jr. with the reception. And and when you have somebody who is six foot seven, 265 pounds, you can't help it but to throw it over the middle, you can reach over almost every defender that they were able to bring the ball in. They look at those stats. Matthew Jr., 130 yards and a touchdown on six receptions today. Meyer under center. That pass just off the mark. Second and 10. Nice coverage by Baltimore. Yeah, just an overthrow right there. He, six foot seven, but not seven foot seven. Um, it was just a little bit errant pass, but I really like the aggressiveness coming from the backup. Almost to midfield, as you can see, got him placed at about the 48-yard line. Fire to throw. That off the mark in the air. That was dangerous. That kind of hung up there for a while. Could have been intercepted. Instead, that's an incompletion third down. Yeah, and he got away with one right there. That could have been an interception. Got to be careful thrown into double coverage like that. And on third down, you begin to hear... The crowd get into this one, rallying on their defense. A short throw, and that goes nowhere. Maybe a gain of two at the most, but a quick out that Baltimore read to perfection. Yeah, and, and that's the stop. What you need, you, you're going to have time to get into scoring range. you got two minutes left. And that's going to bring us to the two-minute warning, folks, in what has been an exciting first game of this season, 22, right here. Don't go anywhere. You are watching the Simulation Football League on YouTube. And on the punt, it is fielded at the 20, and it will... Be a, I think Irvin will get out to about the 24-yard line. And a game update is ready at SFL headquarters. Cameron Irvine, take it away. Thank you, Cameron. Louisiana is in D.C. today, and after trailing 20 to nothing at the half, Louisiana goes on a four-and-a-half-minute drive to start the third quarter, 20 to 7. Dragons on top of the Rebs. Back to you in Baltimore. Thank you, Cam. Obviously keeping a pulse on that game as well here in Baltimore. Now, Baltimore with the handoff running left side and a minute 45 to go. How aggressive do you choose to be here, Anthony? You see what the first of two plays will give you. If it's not enough, don't risk it. Just go into the half because you don't want to get a turnover. We'll see if they have any opportunities downfield as Wigmore back to pass. Rolling out. Good good job by that offensive line. The pass, it actually hit Irvin there and just wasn't able to bring that one in. So third and nine. Yeah, and that would have been big because that would have get them closer to field goal range right there. You had all the time, just looks like just took the eyes off the ball a little bit sooner than he wanted to. Maybe anticipating a hit there. And nevertheless, a third and nine with the clock stopped here. Minute 22. We'll see if they can convert. It is complete to Chima and steps out of bounds, but not able to get to the first down stick. So that means that Baltimore now will have to bring on Maddie Coffins once again to punt. And Queen City may have an opportunity if they choose to, to march down the field. Yeah, a lot of three and outs right there. In, in under four minutes, we already had three three and outs by both teams right there. As you're looking to establish a drive, you gotta you gotta start with the first play. Coffin's kick is a good one, and it's a fair catch this time again by Bob Wood. 
So from the 25-yard line, Queen City will have a minute and 11 seconds left to see what they want to do. Uh, you got to imagine they'll look and see if there's any shots downfield that they want to take. Other than that, they may be content to take this seven-point lead into halftime. Yeah, and that's okay, especially with a backup, with the injuries and stuff that happens. It's nothing wrong with it, but definitely take a shot and see what you can do first. Meyer still in the game. The handoff to Jet Zero. Nothing really there. They're going to give him a yard. Uh, clock continuing to run, second and nine. Still have some timeouts here. Just clock management is important. If you're running the ball, then you're taking it to the half. But just realize you got your, your clock is moving. 49 seconds and ticking. The handoff again to zero around right side. He will stay in bounds. And, and you can see there they seem to be pretty content to not push anything down the field. And as we said, go into the locker room with a seven-point lead here. Yeah, and and you want to check to make sure how the injuries and make sure everything is okay here. But you just definitely you didn't want to risk it. Third and four. They will go to the air this time. And it is complete. A nice reception by Ellis. And they will decide to call a timeout. And maybe you would think attempt a Hail Mary of sorts if they have the opportunity. Well, yeah, you, you have enough time to run another play and get it out of bounds. And, you know, that's what you want to. You, you want to get to that 38, 37-yard line so your kicker can be comfortable kicking the field goal. Again, that pass is complete to Adrian Ellis. I believe they go no huddle here, and now you expect to see them maybe take a deeper shot down the field. Six seconds and counting. This could be the last play of the half. It's a short one, and it's complete. And they will stop the clock with one second left. Wow, so they were able to fit three plays into about 10 seconds time there, Anthony. Pretty impressive. Very impressive. Just wish they did that a little bit earlier. But um, they were able to get to, oh, looks like they're not in field goal range. Looks like they're just going for it. And they'll run it. That'll bring us to the end of an exciting first half. Folks, let's just take a minute and catch our breath before we get going again. Uh, an exciting, eventful first half. Queen City heading into the locker room, leading by seven, 21 to 14. Anthony, take it away. We want to let, hear from you about what you think your thoughts are on this first half of the game. It, it, it's been a very back and forth game is what we're looking for. Baltimore has some opportunities in the first few drives to intercept the ball. It looks like it went through defender's hand, and Queen City took advantage of it. Big-time plays by Matthews Jr. and Eric Price, even the backup for Queen City coming in. Uh, Baltimore hanging tight, was able to throw the ball in the air. Irving catching seven catches for 91 yards, playing good defense as well. So it's going to be about who can get the turnover that's going to swing, swing the, the game back and forth. But right now we've been seeing two good football teams at the beginning of the season. Absolutely. So a very exciting first half indeed, and we didn't expect the same here in this third and fourth quarter. We will also take a moment to check on the injury status of the players out thus far in this game. We've had a few injuries. We've got Caesar Ackerman now with a bruised calf who he looks to be questionable there. And then for Eric Pratt, he's going to be dinged up and out of the game for the rest of the day. So they will have to go with Rick Meyer as we get ready and begin this second half. Welcome back to Sports Gamers Online Stadium here in Baltimore. We want to remind you to check out sportsgamersonline.com or check them out on YouTube and see why millions visit their website and YouTube channel. We are ready to start this second half. Queen City will get the ball back, and one can only wonder what we'll see and what awaits us at the conclusion of this ball game. A nice return once again by Wood, and we have our first penalty of the day. They call clipping on the receiving team. 
So Baltimore will accept it, and that will move the ball to the Queen City 41-yard line. Let's take a look at this replay. Yeah, you got to be careful with blocking in the back right there. Clearly, the push in the back on number number 39 right there got caught in 4K. You got to be careful when you when you do blocking. Cameron Duty again with Anthony Ellison, uh, Justin Rissad, and Axel Raven doing stats. And one of the stats that just got passed along to us, Giovanni Bolt is back in this game for Baltimore. So there is a little bit of good news for the injured Baltimore unit. First and 10 now. Meyer still under center to Jet Zero. The handoff, he spins out of a tackle and gets a nice gain on first down. They're going to give him eight. So it looks like even with Eric Price now, Meyer stepped in and has been delivering some good passes right here. But what's going to be key in this second half, you have the lead, it's going to be running the football. Interesting to see Queen, Queen City here, excuse me, playing ahead here and how they manage this football game. Got a great opportunity here if they can take advantage of it to put a little bit of distance between themselves and Baltimore. We will have to see if they're able to do that. Meyer again still under center. The handoff to McDowell. And they're going to give him forward progress uh, right there. Going to say that he got it past the sticks for a first down. The pass over the middle, and it is complete once again. Matthews Jr. getting some work in, and seven-yard gain on that one. Yeah, and that and that will just say once again, Matthews doing what he was doing in the first half right there, getting open in front of that zone, right in front of those linebackers, setting up a manageable second down, so you can run it here, and you'll still have third down if you don't get it to pass it. The handoff. Not much there, going to bring up third and one, and this Baltimore defense really hungry for a stop. Down by seven, wanting to try to get this offense off the field. Yeah, and that's going to be big because Baltimore doesn't want them to keep on having momentum. You want to get the ball in the offense so you can score right here. Queen City, setting up to run the ball. You, you got a good look at the right side edge. The handoff up the middle and a great job by that offensive line for McDowell to run through. You could have driven a truck through that hole. Yeah, and, and that's just clearing the way. That is literally your right guard just moving that tackle over and then heading to the second level. And those are the runs that you're going to want to see going forward for Queen City and keeping Baltimore's offense on the bench. Take a look at those team stats thus far in the game, and there's a stat for you. A sack big time by Smith coming in and completely pancaking Rick Meyer. And what we saw was Frank Smith timing the cadence of the quarterback and just jumping in there right when it says height. The quarterback right there has to check it, take a step back, call an audible, because they timed it so well, he was able to get to the backfield before he was able to set his feet. Back to the air, and what a response. How about that? You get completely laid out, and then you stand right back up if you're Rick Meyer and develop a complete dart down the field to Matthews Jr. for the first down. Yep, we've been we've been seeing this all, all day. This was just a seam route right when, and it was kind of tricky because it was a cover three defense, and they had somebody underneath as well, but was able to find a seam and find Matthew Jr. for another catch. Matthew Jr. is having a day, folks. 162 yards on 10 receptions. The Jet Zero now, and one thing that you're starting to see, a great game that time, and that nice blend of pass and run is really allowing Jet Zero and McDowell to have some more open, uh, open field to run. Because the box is lighter, just less lineman and linebacker because you're worried about the pass because Matthew Jr. has been doing so well, is able to set up good running situations. The handoff again and a nice hole once again for McDowell to run through. And a first down as Queen City continues to churn. That's a good word for continuing to churn their way downfield. And... And it, it, they're just pushing the line of Baltimore back right here. Looks like the only time Baltimore is getting pressure is when they send more 
rusher. So maybe you need to blitz a little bit more and, and disturb that backfield of Queen City. Back to the air they go. This time a screen out to Jet Zero, and he just lowers the shoulder and runs forward for about five yards for this second and five. You know what I like about that play right there is it, you're throwing it to the outside. It stretches the defense. It's making the defense honest that you got to play those outside swing passes from the running back and everything like that and just opens up the running lane for Queen City. Back to the ground they go again with McDowell. A couple yards gained on that. They'll give him two, and that brings up a third and three here. Baltimore, if I'm Baltimore right now, I'm sending pressure. You don't want to get Queen City settled into the pass right there. You know that they they can they have Matthews Jr. available. Send some pressure. You want to disturb them. Man in motion. That's Ellis. Zone coverage here. To the air. Another screen to zero, and he gets. Oh, he's short. Yeah, he tried to make a, a, an effort to cut the edge there to get the first, and they're going to mark him short, fourth and inches. Oh, We've got a challenge. Oh, okay. So Queen City deciding to challenge that one, and that is going to bring us to a review, obviously brought by the great folks at Retroid. That's a Retroid challenge, and let's take a retroactive look at the play. Presented by Retroid, get your SFL console at GoRetroid.com. So what we're looking for, folks at home, is where the ball crosses before uh, zero is out of bounds right here. And it looks like the ball is in the left arm, but the body is in the front. So it looks like it should be short. And the play will stand. Queen City, importantly here, charge the timeout. We'll see if that will come back to hurt them later on in this game. So they lose the challenge. They lose a timeout. And that will, we assume, bring on the special teams unit. I don't see them going for it here, although I could be wrong. Yeah, and, and that's a great, great challenge by Baltimore right there. Like I said, the ball was in the left side of the uh, running back, and it didn't cross the line. Joe Garfield tacks on three points, and that will extend this Queen City lead to 10 which is important here. Putting up a 10-point lead on Baltimore, any points you can get is crucial when you play the Baltimore Vultures. Still a very nice drive, even though it didn't end in a touchdown. Even though, but that, that, that makes it a two-possession game, meaning right. that they can't tie it right here. So you're sitting here knowing Queen City that you could play play the defense, maybe put an extra person on Irving in the, in the passing game and forcing them to run. This one will come out to the 20-yard line. Five minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Have you ever wanted to be a play-by-play -play or analyst broadcaster? We are currently looking for passionate SFL participants or viewers like you who want to join the team for this major league season. Please visit simulationfl.net slash broadcasting for more details on how you can get involved and get your voice on the call. Believe me, you'll be glad you did. First and 10 here for Baltimore and some hard running that time by Hubba Kimbrell. Yeah, and, and great job just holding up just in time for the rest of the team to get there to tackle it, or that could have been a lot more yardage right there. So great job by Queen City to contain what we just saw. Take a look at that stat, folks. We know Baltimore's backfield is... Very famous, notorious for eating up yardage. Ten carries, just 31 rushing yards so far in today's game. That is very telling. Will it come alive here this third quarter? We will see. Murray that time getting out around the right side, and it will be third and three after a nice little pickup. Yeah, and, and every third, third down is important, but this is really key because you want – you need more positive yardage right here because you're down by two scores and then the time keeps running. And the handoff, Kimbrell, and he is stood up. 
Hubba Kimbrell stood up behind the line by Justin Reside, who is he just come over from Las Vegas, his sixth year in the league, his first year with Queen City, and making a big stop. I believe he also is credited with the forced fumble earlier. Big time play by Queen City. And and the fact is now they're punting the ball right here. That that's such a big play on defense, giving it back to your offense that can control the tempo, that can slow it down now, chew some clock, and make Baltimore become more aggressive than they probably don't want to be. Bob Wood makes it down to the 35-yard line. And again, folks, just to update you, quarterback Eric Price out of this game for the remainder of the day. It will be Rick Meyer who will continue under center for the duration of this ball game. Man in motion now, three over to the right side. Meyer under center, going to the air. It is intercepted, intercepted, and it's going the other way, folks. A great and well-timed out turnover that time. Elijah Warfield on the interception, and again, just when Baltimore needed it most. So we saw earlier in the game, Warfield, um, Elijah Warfield was able to block to defend it and um, knock it down. This time was able to get the hands on the ball, saw the route and played it. And that's so big for Baltimore after they just went three and out right here. Baltimore set up in good position. Let's see if they can capitalize off the turnover. So reminiscent of what happened in the first half when Baltimore was again down in this game. They got the turnover they needed. Now, can they respond once again? They have great field position on Queen City's 30. Pressure is coming this time, and Wigmore stands right there in the middle of it, delivers a shot to Chima. They're going to give him the first down by stretching out there towards the sticks, but wow, I thought Wigmore was going to go down for sure. And, and not being phased by all the pressure around him, able to stand in the pocket tall and deliver a strike down the field, that's what you want to see out of Wigmore when Baltimore needs it. Now that's a three-time All-Star out there for you. Eight seasons in the league, and he has seen it all. And again, as you said, just cool under pressure and delivers a nice throw, first down and 10. And here we go. Pressure coming again this time. Over the middle to Ivory Irvin, and it'll be first and goal inside the 10 here. And, and there he is. Again, we were look, wondering when we was going to see him in this half. And just right on time, beautiful pocket, fantastic blocking up front. Was able to throw a strike to Irving, setting up a first and goal. Where last time when they were in the in the red zone, they was able to run it in. Ivory Irving made his way all the way down to the four yard line. Going to mark him just outside the three. It looks like first and goal. You expect to see that rushing ground game, and there it is. T. Roy Gaines with a nice gain. Second and goal. Will they go back? They look like it in eye formation here. You expect run, but can you stop it? Here it is. Running right side, and they do. A great tackle by uh, a fantastic tackle again by Justin Reside, the cornerback, coming in, making another well-timed tackle, and it's third and goal. Stopping, stopping that <laughs> that touchdown right there. Big hit by the cornerback right there, showing that you can play the pass and play the run right here. Big third down for Baltimore. By far the biggest third down of the game thus far, and they give it again on the ground, and he stopped. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, stopped. Oh, my goodness. Kappa Jones that time for the big saving tackle, and that really saved that drive, folks. That is big-time players stepping up in big-time moments, knowing that they want to run the ball. Kappa Jones is able there to shoot the gap and make a play. Instead of them getting a touchdown after a good drive by Baltimore, they got to settle for a field goal. Great defensive stands after a turnover by Queen City. Dark Tarkington able to tack on three. And both of these teams needed something on that drive. Baltimore needed some points, and Queen City needed to be able to flex that muscle and show that they could 
make a goal line stand, and that they did. It's now a one possession game, Queen City leading 24 to 17, and we will see how they choose to respond. This kick is down in the end zone, so it will come out to the 20 yard line. And Anthony, once again, I'll turn to you, my friend. If you are Queen City here, how aggressive do you want to be? You want to keep your foot on the gas, though. You don't want to go to sleep on this Baltimore team. Well, if I'm, if I'm Queen City, I, I need positive yardage right here. Just, I need to run the ball, and now I got to look for Matthews Jr. over in the middle. Meyer to throw, and it's complete. A nice play. We have seen them get very comfortable throwing it to Adrian Ellis as this game has went on. And again, another first down reception. Yeah, and that's a good throw right there. Really soft coverage right there. Was able to find the hole and was able to deliver a absolute strike for another first down. Take a quick look at Meyer stats. 10 of 14 for 130 yards. And Adrian Ellis over the 100-yard mark now. Six receptions on nine targets and two touchdowns, might I add. This time, the Jet Zero running right. Spins his way off of a defender and gets two. A good job by there by Baltimore. But you know what's going to happen. Queen City's looking to pass the ball right there. And they have a six foot seven target that is dangerous. But good job stopping the run on that first down. Two men in the backfield and two wide receivers on this formation for Queen City. The final seconds of the third quarter ticking down. It's a run once again by William McDowell. He gets a nice chunk that time on second down. Give him seven yards. And it looks as if we will see one more play in this third quarter. Same formation as before. One receiver to the left, one to the right, two men in the backfield. Delayed handoff this time, and it's a good one. Getting just the amount of yardage that they needed, that was Jet Zero. Big fan of that play call right there. Just a quarterback draw. Looked like you're stepping back in the pocket. It, you, it was enough for the linebackers to drop back in coverage and then hand the ball off. Right there. What a way to change up the play design. All right, folks, you know what to do. Get those fours ready. Hold them up high. And Queen City leading this game as we head into the fourth quarter. You are watching the SFL on YouTube. Nation of Simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. We welcome you back for the start of this fourth quarter. Queen City trying to do something they haven't done since season 14, and that is beat the Baltimore Vultures. Can they do it? They're a quarter away. First and 10 right at midfield. Man in motion. That is, again, Adrian Ellis. All three wide receivers over on the left. Jet Zero this time running left and gets another good chunk of yardage. About three on that one. So right now, this is the fourth quarter here. Things are going to tighten up. Baltimore, you're looking for a stop right here. Queen City, keep on driving, and you're just chewing the clock. Second and seven. As you said, wanting to chew some clock down and continue to get positive momentum. McDowell running right, running hard. He's going to get a couple of yards, and that's going to bring up third down. So a big third down here for Queen City. This one, very important in and what they want to ultimately do in this game. You got to stay committed. Last third down, Queen City did a, uh, a halfback draw right here. Be on the lookout. You got to keep your eye out, Matthews Jr. The handoff, they play it kind of safe on third, and there was a little bit of communication issue in the backfield. A couple of defender, or excuse me, guards there kind of run into one another, and that included Jet Zero in that mix as well. Fourth down. That's, that's exactly the stop that you wanted. So right now, Baltimore, you got to be excited. You got to tell your offense, hey, look, we got the stop you're looking for. Now let's go out there and let's get those points. Yeah. 
And that's Ian Dagan to punt, and he hits a nice one. That's a nice kick for sure. And Irvin will field that at the 14-yard line. So now Queen City will have to rely on their defense. They come off of a really good goal line stand, as we just witnessed. they got to be feeling some good momentum after that for sure. It's going to be interesting here to see what they come out looking like and also how aggressive Baltimore is going to be coming out of the gate here on this series. On first down, Wigmore to pass over the middle, and it is complete to Irvin for an eight-yard gain. Yeah, and that's a good start right there. You want to keep yourself in manageable second and third downs. Um, you have you have time. You're fine. You don't want to force it, but you definitely want to get, get it out there to your playmakers. You have a fantastic running game as well. Taking a look at Irvin's stats over the 100-yard mark. Been very busy today, and Wigmore, as always, looking to to rely on him. And again, he goes in motion here over to the left side. Second and two, they go run this time. Tripped up in the backfield, but that doesn't stop Warren Murray. He gets just enough for the first down. Great, great job fighting for that first down right there, keeping the drive alive for Baltimore. This is all you want to do. Again, good penetration by Queen City that time. They met him in the backfield, but that was just pure determination to get that first down and keep the drive alive by Warren Murray. At the 24-yard line. The delayed handoff to Kimbrell, and he gets a good six yards on some hard running there. That'll bring up second and four now. You can see Kimbrell stats. They have contained him very well. He does have the touchdown, but as you can see, just about three yards a carry. Not been a traditional rushing day for Baltimore as we expect. You've got to credit Queen, uh, excuse me, Queen City for that. The handoff again to Kimbrell. Stuffed. Absolutely stuffed. And a great job by the defense that time. What a great job on, on the defensive front there by Queen City. Third and two now. Clock continuing to run. 6.50 now left in this ball game. And again, another very important third down here. And Queen City needing another very important stop. Baltimore to the ground again to Warren Murray. And again, he gets just enough. They called his number twice when they needed that conversion on third down, and they got it. And you see Baltimore now, they're, they're pushing the defensive line of Queen City. They're, it's a great balance, and they're keeping the drive alive, and this is all you what you want to do. A very methodical drive right now. Baltimore showing no panic, just really running the game that they're wanting to at the moment. And again, continuing on the ground this time, and there's the hole they've been waiting for. A great run that time by Hubba Kimbrell. And another first down, starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah, and you're seeing why rush for 1,800 yards, the, the blocking, the pancakes from the offensive line. I love the pancakes. It was able to move the ball downfield with an excellent run from the right side of that offensive line. Under six minutes left to play in this fourth quarter, folks. Baltimore has just crossed midfield. And this time they go to the air. Pressure coming. He gets it off just in time to Irvin. Irvin shakes a tackle. He's got open field to the 20, to the 10. They're not going to catch him. Touchdown, Baltimore. And we are one point away from tying this thing up. What a play by Irvin. We said it in the beginning. We feel like this was going to be a great game. It's the first game of the season. It's a division rivalry. And this is right here, breaking the tackle and then kicking it outside, seeing nothing but daylight right there. That is the way to respond if you're Baltimore. We got ourselves a ball game here, five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Baltimore would not be denied. At one point, they were down 10 points. They have now clawed their way back in it. And they're one point away from tying this up. Again, Sharp Tarkington with the extra point. The kick right down the middle. We're all knotted up, folks. 540 left in this fourth quarter. 
And aren't you glad you tuned in? If you haven't yet, smash that like button, folks. We are going to have a great finish. APM Music is unrivaled music to bring your stories to life, inspiring every production with the world's most robust and constantly refreshed music collection, state-of-the-art technology, and world-class customer service. APM Music is the official soundtrack of the Simulation Football League. To explore their library and to find the perfect tracks for your projects, visit apmmusic.com. And on the return by Ellis, he gets it out to the 26-yard line. We're Queen City now with plenty of time to work, of course. He's going to have to figure out a way to punch this one in. Yeah, this is – you can tell it's by passing right here, 297 yards passing and a rushing attack is almost 100 yards. You just want to keep it balanced here. You realize that Baltimore might come out in a nickel defense uh, with less people in the box, so capitalize on your running game if you can. You take a look at how controlled Queen City has been able to, to be about all of the categories thus far in this game, winning on all fronts at the moment with backup quarterback Rick Meyer in. If you're just tuning in, Eric Price out with an arm injury. So it's Rick Meyer who will have to continue to be the captain of this offense. He throws the pass behind Matthews Jr. at second down. And you got to be careful if you're Myers but you know they have interceptions this game they they drop two of them so you know that Baltimore wants to be aggressive so you don't want to give them field position going the other way by throwing an interception and on second down the clock is stopped 531 left in this fourth quarter three receivers to the right one to the left pressure coming Myers stands in there and that was almost intercepted and this defense is really coming up aggressive here, swatting the football down and really making it difficult for Meyer to find the open man. Yeah, and this is a, a big third down because if you take a three and out, Baltimore has all the momentum going for them. So you want to make sure you get this first down. You know you're going to be looking for Matthews over that middle. Yeah, Queen City just trying to hang on to that momentum. To the air, and there you go, Adrian Ellis. You're a big playmaker. You've relied on him all game long, and you go back to him when you need the conversion the most. A great play for a new set of downs. You got two 100-yard receivers for today right here, and that's the other one, Adrian Ellis, lined up opposite of Matthews Jr. Beautiful post route. The coverage was soft underneath, so it was able to go over the top right in front of the safety for a first down. That's a big play to keep that drive going, especially when there's not a lot of time left. The stats tell it all. Ellis has been a busy man today. We're down to five minutes left in this fourth quarter. And Meyer back to pass. Complete no out of his hands. He took a shot there as he was trying to reel that one in. That was Bob Wood trying to get the reception. And Baltimore said, no way, Jose. You got to be careful. Baltimore is going to look at that those post routes. And they're going to put more coverage underneath and they're going to jump it. So you have to be careful. Second and 10. Adrian Ellis with his first 100-yard receiving game in the 4K23 era. Congratulations to Adrian Ellis for that honor. He certainly played a fantastic game. Will he be able to help lead this Queen City team down the field to lock this game in? The pass this time complete. Mm. No, once again, drop. Oh, my goodness. Another dropped. Another drop pass, and that's Ben Stackenpaper calling his name for a great hit. Yeah, that just perfect timing until it's not pass interference was able to deliver the hit and, the, and drop the ball. So that's a great defensive coverage right there. The crowd on their feet trying to rattle Rick Meyer in this Queen City offense. They use a little bit of motion here. Bob Wood going from right, coming over to left. That's going to put three receivers to the left-hand side. Meyer back to pass. Great job by that offensive line. And he delivers. And again, Adrian Ellis, sure-handed, gets the first down. No fear going over the middle. Shout out to Queen City offensive line right there. Great job rolling out just a little bit, just enough time, and delivers an absolute dot to Adrian Ellis right there. That keeps on going with over 150 yards receiving for today. 
Ellis outstretching those arms to bring in a beautiful reception. We are going to call that our nice hands catch brought to you by Retroid. Put a Retroid handheld in your hands and play the only video game with your player in it, SFL 4K23. Delayed handoff, and he is dragged down from behind. They were trying, looked like they had some room to run as well, had it not been for Al Walker that time. And great job staying home on that play. Typically, the play design is for the defense to go up the field, and then you can just pitch it right underneath. Great job by the defense staying home and getting that tackle. Second and 10. Clock continuing to run, folks. Rick Meyer. Handing it off to Jet Zero, weaves his way through some defenders, and he's going to get some yardage there. And we've got a player down, folks. The trainer coming out for Baltimore. Who is it? Uh, unfortunately, it's Frank Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Frank Smith is down. Another defensive player for Baltimore on his back on the turf. We'll see if we can get an update before this game is over. Again, we want to update those who may be tuning in late here. Eric Price for Queen City. Playing a great game, but was knocked out with a forearm injury. He will be out the remainder of the game. Rick Meyer has now taken his place. Third and six. Meyer rolling out. Good time. And it's just dropped. He had him. He had him. He had him in the wide open. James Matthew Jr. there just a little bit low. And that's going to end this drive. It's going to bring up fourth and six. That's that's tough right there. Just if you just set your feet, you had you had somebody open just a little bit low right there. Uh, let's see how, how this field goal attempt is. Joe Garfield on to attempt the field goal, and he's sure-footed. That kick is good. So Queen City will take the lead. They go up by three. Probably not what they wanted. They had a great drive going. They were they were looking for that touchdown to make it harder for Baltimore to drive right back down the field. But they will take the three points, and now they're going to have to rely on their defense to come up with the big stop. Yeah, this is going to be this is going to be big here. You you got points on the board. That's very important. But you want to stop them. Baltimore has a lot of momentum. They've been looking good on offense in the second half. That tackle made at the 27-yard line as Anderson come back on that return. All right, Anthony, let's set the scene here. If you are Baltimore, you're down by three. You've got a great running game. You've got great wide receivers. Where do you begin at here, my friend? How aggressive do you want to be with 337 left? You you want to – the biggest thing you want to take your time. I would start with running the football here, just seeing how the defense reacts but also maybe mix in a play action and take a shot, but just see how it is. Read the defense right here. It looks like they're in man coverage, so recognize that and see what you can do. First down, they do go to the air here, and it's intercepted. It's intercepted by Queen City. A great interception by Anthony Wyo, and wouldn't you know it, we talked about the defense needing to make a stop, and there it is. That is just absolutely amazing ball hawk skills right there. Was able to, to pass off the receiver to play the underneath while watching the quarterback the whole entire time and made a big play for his team. Fantastic play right there. Now, Queen City, can you punch it in and make this a difficult comeback? That's exactly right. What Queen City wants to do here, folks, they're looking for six to make this difficult. Meyer now to the air, complete to Ellis. He's relied on him this entire game since he came into the game for Eric Price. And another first down, the clock is running. You, you want to punch the ball in, but you also want to kill the clock. And, and that's a good pass right there. Stay in bounds. Fall in and fall in bounds right here. Make some run. You got to make Baltimore use all three of their timeouts. Now, Baltimore. You have three timeouts and you have the two-minute warning. So there's no need to freak out, but you also got to stop them from getting in the end zone. The clock continuing to run, approaching three minutes. Y.O. What a great interception to put them in great position here. And the handoff to McDowell for six. Clock continuing to run. And a nice job right there by McDowell getting that great yardage. It's 
and, and back to the interception right there, it's just reading the eyes of the quarterback and just making the big play right there. They got to be going crazy on the sideline. Second and four now for Queen City. Meyer to zero. Stopped right at the line. He got tripped up in the backfield and barely made it back. The biggest third down of the game is set to happen here, folks. Third and four. Let's yeah. put you as the coach, Anthony. What do you want to do here, friend? I, I'm, I'm taking the shot. I'm, I'm, I'm passing it right here. You want to get this first down because it's going to make it difficult for Baltimore to win this game. Third and four, and they're going to the air. To the end zone. Deflected and incomplete. And that's huge, folks. A great defensive effort by the number 41, Giovanni Bolt, who was actually injured earlier in this game. He's back in the game, as we mentioned, and comes up with a big-time swat. Yeah, and, and that's the play that you wanted for Baltimore right here now. You know, it's going to lead them to a field goal. Baltimore, you still have the chance to win this game. So on to attempt the kick now will be Joe Garfield, a 27-yard attempt. He just nailed one from 46. And they'll extend their lead if they can do it. And the kick is good. It's a six-point lead for Queen City just outside of the two-minute warning. As, again, we talked about, we they needed the touchdown. Again, they'll be glad they got some points out of that. And, again, though, you're going to have to call on your defense to – really make another big play or at least lock down this Baltimore offense. Yeah, it, it's Baltimore. You have a lot of time. You know, you, you need a touchdown here, but also, you know, you don't want to force it. And what happened last night, you want to forget about what happened last series and focus on this drive right here, which is going to be the biggest drive of the game. Let's quickly go to Cameron Irvine at SML or SFL, excuse me, Game Center there, my friend. Give us a game break. Thank you, Cameron. Louisiana had two touchdowns today. DC had two touchdowns today, but Potty Potty had six field goals. DC scored on their last six possessions, and they took care of business against Louisiana today. 32-14. Back to you. Thanks, Cam. And it's coming down to the wire here, folks. Got a great one. We know the finish is going to be fantastic as well. Maybe even an instant classic. We'll see. First and ten for Baltimore. The handoff. T-Roy Gaines. And he is stopped. He's able to ground those legs a little bit. Kind of pound his way up for five. Let's take a look at that stat as well. Ivory Irvin. Ten receptions, 156 yards. Everybody else, just six receptions for 61 yards. Second and five, the clock. Let's make note of that. Continuing to run. Minute 33 and counting. The handoff this time. A first down coming for sure. A nice job of Hubba Kimbrell getting out for the first. Will we see Baltimore begin to hurry up here, Anthony? Yeah, you have to. Right here, you you got to. You have your timeouts here, so you can still take the shots down the field, but you got to speed it up. They go to the air. The pass is no. Oh, it was almost complete to Mac Chima. Instead, flying in like a heat-seeking missile was Alex Marshall for the incompletion. Yeah, well, that's a that's a way to stop the clock. So um, right now, you you need to be careful, but you got to start taking the shots down the field. I really believe running is out of the the call right now. You you got to pass the ball. Second and 10. You see Chima in motion. And that is Justin Rasad who follows him across the field. All three wide receivers there on the left. They go to the air. The pass is complete. First and 10 to Chima. He was the man in motion, and they went for him. A minute. Yeah. Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, you got to get back on the ball right there. Uh, little celebration right there. Good pass. But right now, you're on the 40, and you need to get into the end zone. And you still got a way to go. 57 seconds left and counting, folks. Two receivers, one to the left, one to the right. One man in the backfield. And 
And they're taking their time, folks. They go with the ground game this time. Running left side is Hubba Kimbrell. Kind of surprised about that. They will take their first time out, however. Wow. You, they're playing like they have more time than they, they do, and, and, and you really don't right now. So you, you have to take calculated shots. You still have timeouts, but you need to get 35 yards in 20-something like, in seconds. The pass this time to Murray. A nice one driving down to the 20-yard line. And you can see that it's clear that, that Baltimore want to be the last ones to take a shot at the end zone. And that's exactly what they are doing there, Anthony. Letting this run down uh, comfortably for them. You can see where they're beginning to go with it here. 19 seconds and counting. They want a shot at it. And here it comes. The throw incomplete that time. Great coverage by Queen City. And a very nice job by the Corsairs there and G.B. Wallace on that deflection. So, yeah, you you want to be the last last one to score, um, but you also got to score, too. That's important. 15 seconds remaining. Pressure coming, and it's deflected. What a great job coming in at the last minute. Ted Haynes, we haven't called his name much tonight, but, boy, he come through when it mattered. How about that? Yeah, what a way to get your hands up in the lane, block it, knock it down. Now we got 12 seconds here. What is Baltimore going to do? Well, for one thing, they send three receivers to the left, one to the right, and a lone man in the backfield. What have they got drawn up? We watch with bated breath. Wigmore to the air. It's complete. There's room to run. It's complete. As we said, folks, they will call their timeout. That reception made by Daly Holder. And seven seconds to go. First and goal. This is the finish we've all been wanting, folks. Down to yep. the wire. We've been waiting for it. They have enough to do. Two plays. Take a shot at the end zone. And then you got to you gotta get back here. To the end zone. The pass is dropped. Intended for Ivory Irvin. Just couldn't reel it in. And, and, and that's fine there. Even if it was a catch, it was short. You have a timeout. But now this one is going to be in the end zone. It has to be. And, and, you know, if I'm Queen City, I'm just putting everybody, line them up on that defensive line and let nothing get behind them. Four seconds left. Two receivers on either side. Good job by the offensive line. He stands in there. He throws it to Daly Holder. He stopped, and that's going to be the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Queen City is going to hold on, and for the first time since season 14, they will beat the Baltimore Vultures by a score of 30 to 24. Anthony, take us through this second half and your player of the game. I, it, it was that defensive stop was exactly what we were talking about there. Just everything, keep it in front of you. Fantastic play, the play of the game. I, I, I have to go with a, a pair of Matthews Jr. and Adrian Ellis. We're getting 160 yards apiece receiving. It was fantastic. The defense came to play right here, and great job by the backup coming in and throwing for 179 as well. That was a fantastic ending. Indeed, what a game, folks. Let's take a look ahead as well. Queen City going 1-0 in the next week. They will go on the road to face Houston before hitting their bye week. For Baltimore, it will be Seattle that will be coming to town to play them, and then they will go on the road to Canton for week three. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you have enjoyed tonight's game. We want to thank you for tuning in again. Final score, Queen City 30, Baltimore 24. Let's thank... Axel Raven and Justin Reside in the stats truck. Cameron Irvine in the production end of things. For my partner, Anthony Ellison, my name is Cameron Duty. What a great night, folks. Have a good rest of your evening. We will see you next time for the SFL on YouTube.